Well, hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to Outbreak News TV. Well, with the current situation going on around the world today, um, there's a lot of people out there now calling for the banning of wildlife markets or these wet markets um, to prevent situations like what's going on today from occurring again. And um, in this report from The Guardian, um, they say that the un un United Nations Biodiversity Chief was has called for the global ban on wildlife markets, such as the one in Wuhan, China, believed to be the starting point of the current outbreak to prevent future pandemics. Elizabeth Maruma Rema, the acting executive secretary of the UN Convention on Biological Diversity, said countries should move to prevent future pandemics by banning wet markets that sell live and dead animals for human consumption, but caution against unintended consequences. China has issued a temporary ban on wildlife markets where animals such as civets, live wolf pups, and pangolins are kept alive in small cages while on sale, often in filthy conditions where they incubate diseases that can then spill into human populations. Many scientists have urged Beijing to make the ban permanent. Now, using the examples of Ebola in West Africa and the Nipah virus in East Asia, Marima said that where there were clear links between the destruction of nature and new human illnesses, but caution against a reactionary approach uh, to the ongoing pandemic. Uh, the message we are getting is that if we don't take care of nature, it will take care of us. Um, then she also notes that it would also, it would be good to ban the live animal markets as China has done and some other countries, but we should also remember you have communities, particularly in low income rural areas like in Africa, which are dependent on wild animals to, to sustain the livelihoods of millions of people. So she says, unless we get alternatives for these communities, there might be a danger of opening up illegal trade in wild animals, which currently is already leading us to the brink of extinction, extinction for some species. And there's calls for banning wet markets right here in Washington, D.C. And a group of senators and congressmen um, put together a letter to the World Health Organization and some other international agencies like um, the World Organization for Animal Health and the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations to shut down these live wet markets. And it says... U.S. Senators Cory Booker and Lindsey Graham, both members of the Senate Foreign, Foreign Relations Committee, along with Congressman Mike Quigley and Michael McCall, led more than 60 other Senate and House colleagues in urging leading international health and wildlife organizations to take aggressive action toward a permanent global ban of live wildlife markets, also known as wet markets as well as a ban on the international trade of live wildlife. Wet markets create a breeding ground for infectious diseases, such as several of them, like the 2003 SARS outbreak and the current. It's, it's suspected of being the likely source of the current uh, pandemic. Global action is needed to prevent future deadly pandemics, lawmakers say. It is imperative that we take action as a global community to protect public health. Now, according to scientists, wet markets are fertile breeding grounds for zoonotic diseases. These are diseases that jump between animals and humans. Because of the close proximity of shoppers, vendors, and both live and dead animals. This environment allows viruses from different species to come into contact, mutate, and spread from one species to another. The viruses can subsequently spread or spill over into humans through handling and consumption of wildlife, potentially starting highly contagious outbreaks of new and deadly diseases for which we have no natural immunity. 
as we are currently seeing with the current pandemic. And we have seen in the past with SARS, we've seen with Ebola, monkeypox, and loss of fever in the recent past. Wet markets in particular pose a threat to global public health because wildlife comes from many different locations without any standardized sanitary or health inspection process. And it says, um, scientists estimate that approximately 60 to 75% of emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic. And such diseases have been responsible for at least five pandemics over the last 45 years, uh, including MERS and Ebola. So, so we're getting uh, calls for getting rid of the wet markets from international organizations, uh, intergovernmental organizations, and from uh, the U.S. Congress here in the United States. So what is a wet market? Well, wet markets have become a familiar sight in many countries in Southeast Asia, particularly mainland China, selling live fish, chickens, and wildlife, as well as fresh fruit and vegetables. They get their name from melting ice used to preserve goods, as well as to wash the floors clean of blood from butchered animals. Wet markets can be time bombs for epidemics, says Professor Andrew Cunningham, Deputy Director of Science at the Zoological Society of London. Quote, this sort of way that we treat animals as if they are just our commodities for us to plunder, it comes back to bite us and it's no surprise. Now they say that the current pandemic, which has claimed tens of thousands of lives, likely originated in the Wuhan seafood market. Despite its name, the market was selling a lot more than fish, including snakes, porcupine, and deer, according to one report. So, after an initial cluster of cases connected to the market, the virus began spreading dramatically inside China before reaching much of the world. The origins of the novel virus are unknown, but it most likely emerged in a bat and then made the leap to humans via another wild animal host. And we will get more into that a little bit later in the show. Um... In this article from the Washington Post, it says the next pandemic is already coming unless humans change how we interact with wildlife, scientists say. But they say that the problem is not the animals. According to scientists who study the zoonotic diseases that pass between animals and humans, it's us. Wild animals have always had viruses coursing through their bodies. But a global wildlife trade worth billions of dollars, agricultural Intensification, deforestation, and urbanization are bringing people closer to animals. Given their viruses more of what they need to infect us, opportunity. Most fail. Some succeed on small scales. Very few, like the current virus, um, they triumph. Aided by a supremely interconnected human population that can transport a pathogen around the world on a jet in mere hours. So... Um, so yeah, so there's clearly a, some kind of a connection between animals and human beings, um, when it comes to this and the, seems like the common link is some kind of a wet market. That's what most people are saying. Now, early on, um, in this, uh, pandemic, researchers were saying, that it probably might have started with a snake. But that's been debunked um, since. And um, researchers are looking at other animals, particularly mammals, that uh, could have been the source for human beings to get this um, novel virus. And this is from a press release from the American Chemical Society from a journal called the Journal of Proteome Research. And they say, as scientists scramble to learn more about the SARS coronavirus 2, two recent studies of the virus's genome reached controversial conclusions, namely that snakes are intermediate hosts of the new virus, and that a key coronavirus protein shares uncanny similarities with the HIV-1 protein. So this new study from the Journal of Proteome Research refutes both of these ideas. Instead, 
suggests that a scaly anteater-like animal called pangolins are the missing link for SARS coronavirus transmission between bats and humans. Now, understanding where SARS coronavirus 2, the virus that causes this pandemic, came from and how it spreads is important for its control and treatment. Now, most experts agree that bats are a natural reservoir of SARS coronavirus 2, but an intermediate host was needed for it to jump from bats to humans. A recent study that analyzed the new virus's genome suggests snakes as its host, despite the fact that coronaviruses are only known to infect mammals and birds. Meanwhile, an unrelated study compared the sequence of the spike protein, a key protein responsible for getting the virus into mammalian cells, of the new coronavirus to that of HIV-1, noting unexpected similarities. Although the authors withdrew this preprint manuscript after scientific criticism, it spawned rumors and conspiracy theories that the new coronavirus could have been engineered in a lab. Yang Zhang and the colleagues wanted to conduct a more careful and complete analysis of the virus DNA and protein sequences to resolve these issues. So compared to the previous studies, the researchers used a larger data set and newer, more accurate bioinformatic methods and databases to analyze the genome. They found that in contrast to the claim that four regions of the spike protein were uniquely shared between SARS coronavirus 2 and HIV, the four sequence segments could be found in other viruses, including bat coronavirus. Now, after uncovering an error in the analysis that suggested snakes as the intermediate host, the team researched DNA and protein sequences isolated from pangolin tissues for one similar to the SARS coronavirus 2. The researchers identified protein sequences in sick animals' lungs that were 91% identical to the human virus proteins. Moreover, the receptor receptor binding domain of the spike protein from the pangolin coronavirus had only five amino acid differences from SARS coronavirus 2, compared with the 19 differences between the human and bat viral proteins. They say this evidence points to the pangolin as the most likely intermediate host for the new coronavirus, but additional intermediate hosts could be possible, researchers say. So, and, and if you're like me, this could be the first time you ever heard of what a pangolin is. I had no clue until this all happened. So what is a pangolin? And basically, um, though many people think of them as reptiles, pangolins are actually mammals. They are the only mammals wholly covered in scales, and they use those scales to protect themselves from predators in the wild. If under threat, a pangolin will immediately curl into a tight ball and will use their sharp, scaled tails to defend themselves. Pangolins eat ants, termites, and larvae and are often known as the scaly anteater. Because they have no teeth, pangolins pick up their food with a sticky tongue, which can sometimes reach a length of greater than the animal's body. And they are hugely traffic trafficked, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, they are in very high demand in countries like China and Vietnam. Their meat is considered a delicacy and pangolin scales are used in traditional medicine and folk remedies. All eight pangolin species are protected under national and international laws, but there is still a growing international illegal trade in pangolins. And then finally, you know, who, who would have thunk it? This is one of the most trafficked trafficked animals out there in something I've never even heard of prior to you know the past month or two and this report came out of the wildlife justice commission and they're saying that uh, the analysis identifies prolific countries and smuggling routes shipping methods and street value of pangolin scales pointing out new trends, aiming to bridge some of the intelligence gaps, and the understanding of the architecture of pangolin trafficking. The study also shows a significant and rapid increase in the volume of scales being trafficked, facilitated by transnational criminal networks that are driving the species into extin extinction. 
So pangolin scales, this is the, this is the thing that apparently everybody wants. And between 2016 and 2019, an estimated 206 and a half tons of pangolin scales were confiscated from 52 seizures. The Wildlife Justice Commission believes this is only a fraction of the total being uh, trafficked, as it is likely that a significant portion of smuggling passes undetected. Six of the 27 identified countries and territories disproportionately involved in the trafficking of pangolin scales were found to be linked to 94% or about 193 tons of all the seized contraband during the period analyzed in this report, with Nigeria and Vietnam playing prominent roles in the supply chain. Between 2016 and 2019, they were linked to almost 70% of pangolin scale seizures. During 2018-2019, this prevalence even increased as 84% of all detected shipments involved one or both countries. And then there's the Nigeria-Singapore-Vietnam smuggling route that's been identified as a significant transportation route for the smuggling of scales on their own or in combination with ivory. And if you see a, take a look at this little chart here, you can see that Nigeria, Vietnam, China, Singapore, Hong Kong, a couple more African nations, more Asian nations. Um, these are the top locations for the seizure of pangolin scales. So who would have thunk it? Didn't realize there was such a wide demand, large demand for uh, pangolin scales around the world for traditional medicine or whatever other reasons they, uh, they use it for. But it is an illegal trade. And again, people are being exposed to this mammal. And, uh, this is what the whole point is about, you know, getting away from all this exposure to wild animals because we don't know what they're carrying. We just don't know. And apparently we see the outcome of it um, as we speak today. So anyway, um, let me know. Have, did you ever hear of a pangolin before the past month or two? Right. You know. Did you know it was such in such wide demand around the world for various reasons? Um, what do you think about wet markets? Should they be banned? I want to know. Go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Share this with your friends. And I'll see you next time on Outbreak News TV. Thanks.